wrong, let me show ya Don't know you a star, let me show ya Greatest by far, let me show ya Right. Shalom Israel, Most High Christ Blessed. My name is Officer Jalil and Marita today. Soldier Mark. Today's topic is going to be identifying the spiritual demon Satan. All right. Um, we're in a spiritual warfare. And in warfare, you have to be able to know your enemy. You got to know your enemy's weaknesses. You got you to gotta know how to fight your enemy. You got to know how to combat. combat. You got to know how to fight, how to defend yourself. You got to be aware, you understand? If you're fighting a battle and you don't know who your enemy is and how he's going to attack you, then you are going to lose. You're going to fall. So how do you educate yourself on your enemy? How do you learn who your enemy is and the tactics that your enemy is going to try to use to take you down? Because this is a fight for souls, all right? This is a warfare for over, over the souls of our people, all right? So I want you to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, mm -hmm. which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? All right, so I want you to read that again. Now the serpent was Stop. more... So when it says the serpent, the serpent is talking about the spiritual demon, Satan. That's that spirit that was created from the foundation. Okay? Read on. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. So subtle is going into being cunning, wise, witty. All right? So this is the character trait of the spiritual demon, Satan. It's very witty, cunning. All right? So read that again. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Right. So when it says the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field is because when Satan operates, he cannot manifest himself as a spirit in this physical realm. Satan operates through human beings. All right. So what is it talking about when it says the, 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 the word beast? I want you to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 18. Because when you read the book of Genesis, it's written in a parabolic form, all right? It's written as a dark saying. Now, how you identify what the Bible is talking about is through precept upon precept, all right? One area of the Bible is going to define what another area is talking about. So the Lord told Moses to write Genesis in a parabolic form. R write it hard to be understood, all right? Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 18. Come on. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, mm -hmm. that God might manifest them, mm -hmm. and that they may see that they themselves are beasts. So the Bible classifies the sons of men as beasts, okay? So when you read the term beast in Genesis, that's what it's going into. Go back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Right, because the Satan, the spiritual demon Satan, had to come through one of the sons of men. You understand? Keep reading. Which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So the woman right there is talking about Eve. That's how he came to Eve. All right? Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Just to give you some more characteristics of the spiritual demon Satan. How does he operate? How does he move? Is he a shadow that, that just walks around and, 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 and stays in the dark and jump out and scare people? Or does he have to have requirements met in order to enter into certain people, in order to use them to get, to get his will done, to get his job done? How does he move? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I fear, lest by any means, as, as the serpent beguiled Eve uh -huh. through his subtility. So the serpent beguiled Eve, meaning tricked Eve through what? Through his subtility. Through his subtility, through his wittiness, through the cunningness. Come on. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Right. So read it again. But I fear, lest by any means, 
as the serpent beguiled Eve mm -hmm. through his subtility, mm -hmm. so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Jump to the part where it says the angel of light. I believe it's the verse above it. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Right. Satan is transformed into an angel of light. What does that mean? Satan is transformed into an angel of light. The word angel there is talking about messenger. All right. And the light is going into righteousness. Satan is transformed into a messenger, a, a supposed, a, a, a perceived messenger of righteousness. That's how we approach Eve. That's how Eve was able to look to this man and say, you know what, this dude is wise. This dude has some understanding that's even above my husband, which is Adam. You understand? That's how Eve was, was listened to him because Eve looked at him as this man that had this great wisdom and knowledge. That's how he appeared. But it was a man. The point is, it was a man. All right? Go back to Genesis chapter 3. The book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which mm -hmm. the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. All right, jump to verse 15. Verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. All right, so read that again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. So God is saying, I will put enmity between thee, Satan, and the woman. The woman there is, as, as I stated before, the book of Genesis is written in a parabolic form. So he, he, the Most High is speaking to Eve, but it's also prophetic in what he's saying when, 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 when he said he's going to put enmity between thee and the woman. What is it talking about when it says, I'm going to put enmity between thee and the woman? Who's the woman talking about? Give me Jeremiah chapter 6 to get a better understanding of what this is talking about. This is talking about, this is going into prophecy. Come on. The book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. Right. So go back to Genesis 3.15. The woman is talking about the nation of Israel. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Mm -hmm. And between thy seed and her seed. So I will put enmity, meaning hatred, division between Satan and the Israelites. Because Satan is an adversary created to try the Israelites. This is our opponent. In the spiritual walk, this is our enemy. You understand? This is our main contender. And God says what? Read that again. And I will put enmity between thee and mm -hmm. the woman, mm -hmm. and between thy seed and, and her seed. And between thy seed. Who is Satan's seed? Satan's seed right now is the so-called white man. You understand? There's enmity between the Israelites and his children, which are the so-called white man today. You understand? That's why there's a, 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 a constant fighting between the races. That's why there's constant feud between our races, because it was prophesied from the beginning right here that there would be division, enmity. Hatred between Satan's seed and the Israelites. Who is Satan's seed? The so-called white man. All right? Who are the Israelites? The so-called blacks and Hispanics and Latinos of today, the native Indians of today. That's who the Israelites are. So read that again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, mm -hmm. and between thy seed and her seed. Right. It shall bruise thy head. So when it says it shall bruise thy head, that's talking about the head is talking about Jesus Christ. Come on. And thou shalt bruise his heel. And when it says thou shalt bruise his heel, it's going into Genesis, um, Genesis chapter 25, verse 26, when um, Rebekah was pregnant with um, Jacob and Esau. Esau came out first and Jacob came out after holding on to Esau's heel. And that's also going into 2 Ezra chapter 6, verse 9, when it says Esau is the end and Jacob is the beginning, beginning of it that followeth. That's what that's going into. As I stated before, the book of Genesis is written in a parabolic form. This is prophecy right here. You understand? So read that again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, mm -hmm. and between thy seed and her seed. Mm -hmm. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So one of the ways that Satan is going to be attacking our people is through our main enemy in this, in this physical realm. 
which is the so-called white man, all right? That's one of the main ways he's going to be attacking us. That's one of the main ways he's going to be um, fighting against the Israelites. And how do we see that? Throughout history, when you examine 70 AD, when you, when you, when you look into the, 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 um, the persecution that happened in the 1400s, the Spanish Inquisition, all right, the transatlantic slave trade, even to modern times, all right? Even to modern times, after shadow slavery, you had things set in place like eugenics. You understand? Eugenics is set up for the destruction of our people. Who set up eugenics? Satan's seed, which is the so-called white man. You understand? They, they were set up for Satan to be able to use them to, to attack us, the Israelites. You understand? Even right now, with what we're teaching, they're the main contenders that's coming against what we're teaching. You understand? They're trying to do a media blackout on us teaching who the Israelites are. You understand? They're the main ones behind Christianity. They created modern-day Christianity. They put Christ to be this white man. They put the angels to be white and God white, which is, which is, which is a lie. You understand? And what is that, where, where does that come from? Where does that stem from? Right here in Genesis chapter 3, when it says there would be enmity, there would be constant war. All right? So keep reading. Verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Mm -hmm. In sorrow thou shalt bring All forth right, children. That's it. So who is the spiritual demon Satan? The spiritual demon Satan was created, is a spirit that was created as an adversary to the nation of Israel. You understand? As an adversary to make us stronger, to make us get better, to make us overcome our weaknesses and our, our flaws, God saw it fit to create that spirit to make us stronger, to try us. You understand? To try us. That's why Satan was created. Okay? And all throughout history, when you read in the Bible, you see different instances of when Satan showed himself. You understand? But in order to see Satan, you got to be spiritual enough to see him. How, how can you be spiritual enough to see Satan? You have to know what this Bible is talking about. You got to be keeping the commandments. You understand? You have to learn discernment. You have to be applying what this Bible is saying. And over time, your eyes will be opened up because there's a worldly saying, um, one of the devil's greatest tricks is to make you believe that he doesn't exist. You understand? Now, in order to identify Satan, you, you have to know yourself. You have to be aware of yourself. All right? You have to be able to look yourself in the mirror. Because if you can't look yourself in the mirror, you will never be able to identify Satan. You will always justify yourself, and you will always point the finger. You understand? But when you can come to a place of acknowledging your faults and examining yourself, like the scripture says, then you, you're, you're able to identify, okay, this is how Satan could move. He could use this that I'm battling with. He could use that that I'm battling with. You understand? But we have to be true to self first and foremost before you can see anything at all. So that comes with humility, and that comes with you being real and honest with yourself. Okay? So from there, I want you to go to the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 6. How do we identify the spiritual demon Satan? This is the war that we're in. This is the condition of the battle. We have an enemy that's right before us. He's been assessing us for thousands and thousands of years. What are we doing in assessing him to make sure that we have the upper hand in the battle? What are we doing to make sure that we are properly equipped to fight this battle? Come on. The book of Job, chapter 1, and verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. So the sons of God is going into the angels. So there was a day when the angels came to present themselves before God. Come on. And Satan came also among them. So Satan, the spiritual demon, which is also an angel, he came with them as well. Come on. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Mm -hmm. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth mm -hmm. and from walking up and down in it. So this right here defeats that doctrine that's out there that Satan and there's a division between Satan and God. Satan is doing his own thing and God is doing his own thing. No, if God is omnipotent and God is in full control of all things, then Satan is under his dominion, under his control. You understand? That doesn't make any sense for God to be almighty and Satan is doing something else a creature that he created is doing something else is being rebellious and disobedient to him that doesn't make any sense at all god is all power all almighty 
and is he, he is in control of everything, including Satan. Satan takes orders from God. That's why he reported back to God. You understand? So read that again. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Mm -hmm. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, mm -hmm. and from walking up and down in it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? So when he says, From going up, to and fro in the earth and up and down in it. What is he talking about? What is he doing in the earth? What is he doing in the earth going up and down and to and fro? He's going about trying, testing, tempting. Go to 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Let's get some clearer understanding on what that means right there. Come on. The book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Be sober, be vigilant. All right. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So when it says he was going up and down and to and fro on the earth, it's talking about he's seeking whom he may devour. He's seeking whom he may devour. And who is he able to devour? Read the beginning part. Be sober. Be vigilant. He's able to devour the ones that are not being sober and vigilant. You understand? How do you be sober and vigilant? How are you? Sp you have to be spiritually aware. How do you become spiritually aware? That comes through self-examination. That, that comes through studying and praying and applying these commandments. If you're serious about this walk, then you will start to pay attention. You'll pray to the Lord and ask him for discernment. You understand? You'll see things start to unfold on a spiritual level before your eyes. You understand? Your eyes will be open. But if you're not sober and you're not vigilant, then you're going to be taken down. You understand? The one that is not sober and vigilant is normally the one that's straggling behind the pack. That's the one that Satan as a roaring lion attacks. When you examine a lion, that's the prey that he attacks, the ones that, the ones that are separated from the flock. You understand? He doesn't attack the herd. He attacks the ones that's separated, that's behind, that's straggling behind. Go back to Job chapter 1. The book of Job chapter 1 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, mm -hmm. that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man. So Job was a righteous man, all right? Job was approved of God. But here was, here's Satan's job. Come on. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. Escheweth evil meaning he hates evil. Come on. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Here's Satan's job. What does the word Satan mean? I want you to pull up that definition. I sent it to you, Jim. Just pull it up on the, on the screen. I sent it to your, your, your telegram. Read that verse again. Verse 9, then Satan answered the Lord and said, doth Job fear God for naught? So God finished, just finished giving, giving a good report on Job. He's approved. God said, yo, this man hates evil. I like how he's rolling. So read that again. What Satan say after that? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, doth Job fear God for naught? Has Satan says, you think he fear you for nothing, man? You think he fear you for nothing? But why does he think like this? Why? Because he was created like that. God created him to be so. All right? What does Satan mean? I need that definition. Read that for me. Satan, proper name of the supreme evil spirit and great adversary of humanity in Christianity. So one definition of Satan is what? Adversary. To be against. Come on. Old English Satan. From late, Sat from late Latin Satan and Vulgate in the Old Testament only. Mm -hmm. From Greek Satanist mm -hmm. from Hebrew Satan adversary because what? that's what Satan means adversary come on adversary one who plots against another Satan's job is to plot against the Israelites Satan's job is to plot against us to devise plans to try to take us down and he's been doing that for, for, since the t from the beginning from generation to generation to generation Satan has been devising plots to try to destroy the Israelites and we're going to identify him in the Bible as we go along. Come on. Come on. From Satan to show enmity to oppose. To show enmity because that's what we read about in Genesis chapter 3. Enmity. Enmity meaning what? Hatred. Satan has a deep-rooted hatred for the Israelites. Why? Because he was created like that. You understand? All of the, the, the atrocities that happened to us throughout the transatlantic slave trade and throughout other captivities that we were in. The reason why it was so cruel, the reason why it was with such rigor is because that's the level of hatred that the spiritual demon Satan has towards us. So when we disobey God, God lets him loose. You understand? God lets him loose. 
Come on. To show enmity to. Oppose. To oppose, meaning to go against. Come on. Plot against. Mm -hmm. From roots, STN. One who opposes, uh -huh. obstructs. He's, his job is to try to obstruct us from getting the kingdom of heaven. Come on. Or acts as an adversary. His job is to act in a, as an adversary towards the Israelites. You understand? Him and the demons that are under him. Okay? That's what they were created for. All right? Now go back to Job chapter 1, verse 9. The book of Job chapter 1 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Do, does Job fear you for nothing? Meaning, it's because you got you you give you gave him things. He got blessings and things like that from you. That's why he fear you. Come on. Has not thou made an hedge about him? A hedge is going into a protection. This hedge is talking about Job and his family had angels around him protecting him. That's why Satan couldn't step to him. Okay? Because why? Again, this is spiritual warfare. You understand? We're talking about spiritual warfare. Why was Satan not able to get to Job? You think when he was going through up and down the earth and to and fro, you think he didn't want to go and try Job? You think he didn't want to go and take things away from him to test him? He couldn't do it because God put a hedge around him. What's that hedge? Angels defending Job and his family, protecting him, everything that he has. Angels. All right? Come on. Hast not thou made an hedge about him? Come on. And about his house? Uh-huh. And about all that he hath? About his whole family and everything that Job has in his possession. Come on. On every side. Uh-huh. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. Right. And, and his substance is increased in the land. Right. Put, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath. Uh-huh. And he will curse thee to thy face. So that's what Satan's job is. Satan's job is to try to break us down to a point where we curse God to his face. That's what Satan's job is. Satan figures, you know what? You, he is righteous and he, he does fear God. But if I could break him down to this point right here and get him to go against you, that's how Satan's mind work. That's how God created him to think. You understand? That's why he stepped to Christ and was like, if you bow down to me and worship me, if you jump off this building, you understand? Why would he do that? Satan knows the scriptures. Why does he figure, you know what, even though the scripture says this, there might be a chance that he could bow down and worship me. There might be a chance that Job could curse God to his face. Why? Because God created him like that. You understand? God created him like that. Okay? He is an adversary, an enemy to us, the nation of Israel. All right? We need to have this understanding right here. Come on. Verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Mm -hmm. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So God let Satan loose and said, You know what? Everything that he has, you can go and touch it. But don't kill him. That's the only stipulation. Don't kill him. But everything that he has, you can go and touch it. You understand? Everything that he has, you can go and touch it. And this is how the levels of trials come. The three levels of trials, the personal, the marital, and the congregational. Okay? This is how Satan manifests himself in these trials. But the thing is, are you able to identify him in these trials? Because when trials happen, we look at it on one level. Like, oh, this start happening and that's happening. Oh, woe is me and my life is messed up in this and that. You understand? Well, you got to ask yourself, why are these things happening? Why? You just lost your job. You just, you, you're, you're about to lose your apartment because you, you, don't have enough, you, you don't have enough money to take care of your bills and your expenses. Right? And no matter what you try, it's not working. Why? Because you're being attacked. You just lost your family. You came in the truth. You said you want to keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. You lost your kids. You lost your wife. Or you lost your husband. Why are these things happening? Because it's to test you. You understand? It's to test you. Who is testing you? Who is testing you? God is allowing the spiritual demon Satan to come in your life and to wreak havoc. To see how faithful you are to him. To see how loyal you are to him. To see if you're going to remain steadfast. All right? This is Satan's job. Okay? This is Satan's job. Come on. 
Verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Mm -hmm. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters... Jump to verse 15 because we want to see how Satan comes. Because Satan just... He does, he's, not a shadow, he's not a shadow in the corner. You understand? He's not a spirit that just comes out of somewhere and be like, ah, ah. No. How does Satan manifest himself in your life when, he, when he's ready to come and try you? Jump to verse 15. Verse 15. And the Sabians fell upon them. And Wait, read it again. And the Sabians fell upon them. Who are the Sabians? Who are the Sabians? That's going into men. The point is it's men. Satan, his spirit got to go in some man to be able to do his work on this earth. The same way he had to go into some man in Genesis chapter 3. You understand? The same way he had to come in some man to try Job right here. You understand? So from there, I want you to go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Who is the spiritual demon Satan and what is his job? Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which Come keep Come on. which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So read it again. And the dragon Stop. And the dragon is talking about who? The dragon is going into the nation of Edom. We read about this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when it says, And the the the, the there will be enmity between thy seed and the woman's seed. This dragon right here is going into the devil's seed, okay? His children. Who are his children? The so-called white man, all right? When you read when you read in the book of Revelation, it says the dragon, a great red dragon. That great red dragon is going back to Genesis chapter 25, verse 25, when it says the first came out red and hairy like a garment, all right? This is what the dragon in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17 is talking about. So read it again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. So this is going into the nation of Edom. Come on. And it went no, to... The dragon was wroth with who? And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Was wroth with the woman. Meaning what? Angry. Had hatred towards the woman. Who is the woman? The woman is talking about the nation of Israel. We just read that in Jeremiah chapter 6. All right? That's what it's going into. Okay, the same way the book of Genesis was written in a parabolic form is the same way the book of Revelations is written in a parabolic form. And it's only when you're keeping the commandments that you're able to understand what this Bible is saying. So read that again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman Come on. and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. And went to make war. Brothers and sisters, we are at war. What kind of war are we at? Spiritual warfare. This is a war for your souls. You understand? You want to serve God and you want to keep the commandments? You want the kingdom of heaven? You're going to have to fight for it because there's a demon that's in the, in the way trying to obstruct you from getting your, your crown. That's trying to stop you from getting your crown. Trying to get you to turn on your God. Trying to break you down to a, a, a point where you turn against this truth. So what are you going to do? Are you going to be sober and vigilant or are you going to be asleep? Read that again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman uh -huh. and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. Which keep the commandments of God. This is the key stipulation. Because Satan is not out here fighting everybody. Satan's main focus is on the Israelites, which are keeping the commandments. The ones that have woken up to the understanding of that they are Israel and are keeping the commandments, making moves to better themselves and the, and the nation, setting things up in place. All right. IUIC is constantly on the move. All right. Setting up different uh, 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 um, camps, setting up different um, outlets for our people to be able to come to learn. To be able to learn your nationality, learn how to get right with God, apply the commandments, all right? How to heal, okay? And in order to do this, it's going to be a battle. Why is it going to be a battle? Because the, uh, the odds are stacked against us. What are the odds? The spiritual demon himself is against the Israelites. He's against the movement. 
You understand? So we have to be able to understand the type of battle that we're in so that when trials start to happen, when strange things start to happen in your life, you're not taken by uh, unawares. You don't know what's going on. You're asking, why is this happening? Why is that happening? No. Gird yourself and educate yourself on what's going on. So when the trials hit, you have an understanding of, yes, this is what happen what's happening. The Bible says that this was going to happen. The Bible says that that's going to happen. Come on. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, mm -hmm. which keep the commandments of God. So we identified who the spiritual demon Satan is. He's an adversary to the nation of Israel. What is his job? To make war with us. To make war with us and to test us and to try us. You understand? We have that understanding because we went over the scriptures from Genesis to Revelations. You understand? Showing you what the devil, who the devil is and what his job is on this earth. You understand? So I want you to go to Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Because now, now the question is, how do, how do we fight him? Do we punch the air? Is it something that we got we to gotta get some special type of weapon with, with, with some type of uh, 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 special sights on it? With ultraviolet sights and stuff like that to be able to see the spirit, to be able to shoot at it? How do we fight? Give me Romans chapter 15, verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Okay? Throughout the Bible, when you read from Genesis all the way to Revelation, you will see instances of the fight that's been going on from the beginning between the Israelites and the spiritual demon Satan. How does Satan manifest himself? Through the sons of men. Through the sons of men. So every time, there, there's always been opposition. There's always been fights. Anytime we had to set up things for our nation. In the time of uh, 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 Zerubbabel when we, and Nehemiah, when we had to build the temple and rebuild the, the walls, there was opposition then. In the time of the Maccabees, there was opposition then. Okay? In the time of Christ, there was opposition then. All throughout our generations, there's been opposition. And who's always behind the opposition? The spiritual demon Satan. Why? Because his job is to make war with the Israelites. Okay? Now, how do we fight Satan? How we fight Satan is, as I stated before, you have to be able to be true with yourself. We have to examine ourselves. We have to be able to see and identify the flaws that we have within ourselves. Because in war, in a fight, your enemy is going to look for your weak points, and he's going to use those to his advantage. You understand? What you have to do is strengthen those weak points. How do we strengthen those weak points? We have to first identify the various levels on how we will get tried. The various levels are this, personal, marital, and congregational. On these three levels, okay? So how does Satan manifest himself on these three levels? Give me um, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Because we can have personal sins, we can have mar marital sins, or we could be in sin when it comes to you dealing with the congregation. We're going to explain as we go in detail what on in, in these various levels. But the point of the matter is sin. If he can have you in sin, in willful sin, where you refuse to repent, then he got you. If he can break you down to that level, then he got you. Okay? So how does Satan roll when it comes to conquering someone? We're going to get some insight on how he rolls. Give me Genesis chapter 4 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain mm -hmm. and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. The reason why the Lord had respect unto Abel and unto his offering was because that that's what God had commanded. Where do we read about that? In chapter 3, verse 
21, when God instituted animal sacrifice, okay? Animal sacrifice does not include fruits and vegetables, okay? Because Cain was rebellious, he brought fruits and vegetables, and the Lord did not respect that, okay? Then what happened after that? Come on. Verse 5, but unto Cain and to his offering, he's, he had not respect. Because that's not what he commanded him to do from, from, from in the first place. Come on. And Cain was very raw. So Cain got mad. He got in his feelings and he got mad. He got upset. Come on. And his countenance fell. Come on. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? Why Not just mad, but it says wroth. Wroth is a different level of mad. That's now going into hatred. That's now going into that murder spirit. Why art thou wroth? Come on. And why is thy countenance falling? Come on. If thou doest well. Stop. If thou doest well, that's going into, if you keep the commandments, come on. Shall thou not be accepted? If you keep the commandments, you're going to be accepted. Come on. And if thou doest not well. If you do not well, mean, meaning if you do sin, if you disobey the commandments and you're in sin, come on. Sin lieth at the door. You sin lieth at the door, meaning you're in the midst of sin. And if you're in the midst of willful sin, here's what happens. And unto thee. And unto thee. Who is the thee that he's talking about, that he's talking to? We're going to find out. Read. And unto thee. And unto thee shall be his desire. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt rule over him. Why is God saying that? Because there was somebody else there. You know who else was there? The spiritual demon Satan was there. All right? So read that part again when it says, and unto thee. And unto thee shall thou be his desire. Read from, and if thou doest not well. And if thou doest not well, mm -hmm. sin lieth at the door. Mm -hmm. And unto thee shall be his desire. His desire is talking about Satan's desire. Okay? You're going to be a candidate for Satan to use because you're in the midst of sin. Okay? Because you're in the midst of sin, the door is wide open for him to be able to enter into you and use you. Come on. And Cain talked with Abel. Go read that. And, and unto thee shall be his desire. And unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. And thou, Satan, and thou, Satan, shall rule over him. The him is Cain. And thou, Satan, shall rule over Cain. You understand? When you're in the midst of sin and you refuse to repent and you have hatred and you let it build up and you become bitter and you let it just take precedence in your spirit, Satan is able to take control over you and rule over you. Whatsoever his will is, that you will do. Okay? Now, keep reading. Verse Let's eight. see what Satan used Cain to do. Come on. Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So the spirit of Satan was inside Cain to slew his brother. You understand? To, slew, to slay his brother. Okay? To slay his brother. Okay? Reading through the scriptures, you have to be able to pick up spiritually on what's going on. Okay? Spiritual demon Satan was very active in these areas. Okay, let's get some more. Give me John chapter 12, verse 1. When you're in the midst of willful sin and you refuse to repent because you have time and space to repent and change and get your act right, get yourself together. If you refuse to get yourself together, if you refuse to be true to yourself, then Satan will take control over you. Your desire will be unto him and he's going to reign over you. He's going to use you to do his bidding. You understand? That's why we have many people that left IUIC and made videos talking about why I left IUIC. And they're online slandering, making videos and making posts. And they cannot stop doing it. Even if they themselves wanted to stop doing it, they can't do it. You know why? Because Satan is using them. They've become Satan's servants. You understand? Satan, they're fulfilling Satan's desire. Satan is ruling over them. You understand? That's what's taking place. Read the book of John, chapter 12, and verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been, I'll read again. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, mm -hmm. whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them. Jump to verse 6. Verse 6. Then he said, not that he cared for the poor, 
But because he was I'm a sorry, thief. I'm sorry, read verse, verse, verse 5. Verse 4. Verse 4. Mm-hmm. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot. All Simon, right, so who is it talking about? Judas Iscariot. You understand? Come on. Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for thee for 300 pence and given to the So poor? because he was covetous, he said, this ointment should have been sold for what? For 300, for 300 pence. You understand? But he wasn't saying that to sell the ointment and give the, the funds as donation to the poor. Okay? That's not what he was saying. He was saying it to take the money because he was covetous. You understand? His job, he, he was the treasurer. When he was rolling with the disciples in Christ, he was the treasurer. Why did Christ give him the bag in the first place? To, for him to, to, to battle that spirit, to be able to overcome it. You understand? But what did he do? He didn't acknowledge it. He didn't face himself. You understand? He wasn't true to himself, and he wasn't true to the men around him. So what happened to him? Read on. Verse 6, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And had, and had the bag, mm. and bare what was put therein. Mm. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my bearing has she kept this. So stop there. So because Judas Iscariot never repented of the covetousness spirit that he had on him, this is what happened. Jump to John chapter 13, verse 21. The book of John chapter 13 and verse 21. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was, a, there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples. Jump to who, verse 27. Verse 27. And after the... After 26, the, 26. Verse 26. Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when... I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. So he identified that Judas Iscariot was going to betray him. Come on. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Read that part again. After the sop, Satan entered into him. Read that part again. After the sop, Satan entered into him. Why was Satan, why was Satan the spiritual demon, able to enter into Judas Iscariot? Why? Because he had sins that he was dealing with that he was not acknowledging, that he refused to repent of. Okay? And he had time and chance to repent, and he did not. So as a, as a result of that, Satan was able to enter into him and use him to betray Christ. Read that again. After the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this. Okay, so that's what Satan's job is. You understand? How does he enter into you when you have sins that you're battling that you refuse to acknowledge? What type of sins? It could, be, it could mean personal sins, marital sins, or congregational sins. Okay? Right now we're addressing the personal sins. All right? I'm going to give you another example. Give me Luke chapter 22 verse 31. The book of Luke, chapter 22, and verse 31. And the Lord said unto Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may Read sift. It again. And the Lord said unto Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Right. So who is Simon? That's going into Peter. Peter, after Christ left, became the leader over the church. And it says Satan desired him. Why does Satan desire him? Why did Satan desire him? Satan desired to use him to turn this whole truth upside down, to turn everything that Christ was building upside down. Okay? It says Satan desired to use him. Okay? Why was Satan going after Peter so hard? Because he saw certain things in him that Peter wasn't getting right yet. And he said, I'm going to try to go this way. Certain personal things that Peter was dealing with. He said, I'm going to try this right here. And if I could get him, I'm going to use him to destroy this whole ministry. Keep reading. Read that again. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may see. It was so bad that Christ had to tell him, yo, my man, Satan, Satan desired to have you. 
Read. That he may sift you as a wheat. Sift you like wheat. That's how bad he want to break you down. Come on. But I have prayed for thee. But Christ said, yo, all I could do is pray for you. That's some scary stuff to hear. That's some scary stuff to hear. Come on. But I have prayed for thee uh -huh. that thy faith fail not. That your faith fail not because Satan's job is to try to break your faith down. How does he break it down? He got to sift you. He got to break you down to the least common multiple, to, the, to your least point. Okay? That's his job, to break you down to a point where he could possibly get you to turn against God. You understand? But here's the beauty of it. The spiritual demon Satan is a tool that God uses to make us stronger. Because in him trying to destroy us and attack us, it makes us stronger. Okay? It brings about self-awareness. You understand? When you get broken down to those low places, when you get to low places in life, you get to reflecting. You understand? And you reflect. That's also reflecting is self-examination. And that's what we all need. Sometimes you do need to take the time out and pay attention to what's going on. Pay some attention to yourself. Pay attention to your, your, your trail of works that you've been doing before. Okay? Because when we start to pay attention, then we start to be more careful in how we walk. We start to be, become more circumspect, more vigilant. And that's what the Lord is trying to bring out of us. Your experience, it builds faith. You understand? And when you, you, you get strengthened in your faith, you're able to help others overcome as well. So this is the beauty in this whole scenario that the Lord has created. Even though Satan got to come and in, 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 in fight against us, at the same time we're fighting, we get stronger. You understand? So read that scripture. Verse 32. But I have prayed for thee. That thy faith failed not. So in our testing, in our trials, in our tribulations, in us overcoming the sins that we battle, we have to fight, endure, endure, and we have to make sure that our faith doesn't fail us. You understand? Because your faith is the only thing you have. If Satan could take your faith, then he has you. We cannot lose faith. So with that, we're going to end it. There's going to be a part two to this class because so far we've touched on who is the spiritual demon Satan and what is his job. Okay, we've identified who he is and what's his job. Then we started to touch on how to fight him. Now we're going over how to fight him on a personal level, but we have not yet touched on the congregational and the marital levels as yet. So in the next, in part two, I will be touching on the next two parts. So with that, we say shalom, most high Christ, bless Israel. Y'all stay in the spirit, stay focused, and endure. All right? Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.